it says on it it's five liters but they have put this sticker on that again now the delivery department the delivery department at mount franklin's job is to transmit the water by normal post speed post special messenger courier we don't care whatever way they take but what we care about is it should get to the destination now physical layer is all about transmitting data connectors pins cables are all the device are all the devices that work there all right cables is one of the things that we talked about wires we called them earlier so now this water bottle is on its way to get to the destination here we have the destination 223 king street well, i'm talking about melbourne cbd addresses at the moment so over here the delivery department at the customer has got it do they know what it is will they accept it what do you think no they won't they won't because there is no addressing at layer two there's no addressing uh, the addressing only is at layer two there's no addressing at layer one so these guys are not yet sure whether it is for them or not all right so these guys then give it up to layer two as they go up to the dispatch department the dispatch department looks at the water bottle that has got a sticker of five liters of volume on it these guys then actually work out the volume and the volume is 4.9 liters what are they going to do is my question to you so here you have a problem you've got a water bottle that says five liters volume on it when you check the actual volume it's 4.97 will they accept it will they reject it if they reject it who do they contact or if they don't contact anyone is my question do you think it they'll go back to the dispatch department or the addressing department i don't believe addressing because it looks to me to be the right address but what about customer care oh do you reckon they'll just give a call to the ceo and say oh you have sent us a water bottle that's not right hmm what do you think let's talk about what they'll actually do so they've got a water bottle that says 4.9 it is it's not what the water bottle actually says they are going to discard that water bottle throw it away now my question to you is they've thrown this away over here is it going to travel up the osi reference model over here at the customer is someone going to acknowledge that they have received it no so look at scenario number two over here the customer care department that has actually sent the water bottle is now is now waiting for acknowledgement but that acknowledgement will never come because the water bottle has been discarded over here it's been thrown away because it was 4.97 so this layer will then actually recover the error how are they going to recover the error yes by resending it again so they resend water bottle number one again and once you receive it you look at the water bottle it says five liters you check out its volume and it is five liters are you happy with that you take off your uh, header and trailer and then you give it up to layer three layer three checks the address you sent it to 223 king street oh yeah we are 223 king street um, we are happy with that so then they remove their header and then they pass it on to layer four now layer four has got the first water bottle that's your customer care or your transport layer water bottle has was received insurance was taken what do you do then absolutely you send back an acknowledgement yes thank you we've got it all right so the first water bottle has come the second will come the third will come the fourth will come eventually you will get all 10 water bottles once you've got all 10 they're all marked as well what are you going to do reassemble it Ta -da! and there you go you sent 50 liters of mineral water you've got 50 liters of mineral water at the customer this is how osi reference model works for us at cbt anytime but before i continue i want to talk about a few other important things how do we measure weight what's the unit of weight kilograms that's right grams and kilograms what's the unit of length centimeters millimeters meters absolutely right what's the unit of data what do you call data when it is at layer four what do you call data when it's at layer three or layer two or layer one or you just keep on calling it generically you just keep on calling it data no we can't so we have coined a term known as pdu protocol data unit what is the unit of data at customer care department at layer four what's the unit of data at layer three so at layer four we call the data a segment 
At layer 3, we call the data a packet. At layer 2, we call the data a frame. At layer 1, we call it bits and bytes. So if you've got a switch, switch is a layer 2 device. I haven't talked about it now, but I will talk about it later. So if you've got the switch over here, all right, and you go into an interview and you're asked a question, what will the switch do with it? So you have to say the switch will discard that frame, forward that frame, filter that frame, flood that frame, because we know at layer 2, we can't keep on calling it data. We have to call it a frame. All right, that's the first important thing. Very, very important for interviews and exams. Segment, packet, frame, and bits. Therefore, and you can have a look that we called it segmentation. All right, segmentation was actually creating segments out of it. The other thing I wanted to talk about was error recovery and error discovery. This is something that might be left out if you don't talk about it in detail. Now, look at what layer two did. Layer two was only smart enough to say, you said it was five liters on it, but when I weighed it, it was not 5 liters, it was 4.97, so I discard it. It's only smart enough to do that. But which layer actually resent it? Which layer was able to recover this error? We know that there was an error and that was discovered. So it was actually recovered by layer 4, by this layer. So layer 4 does error recovery by resending, and layer 2 does error discovery by discarding it. All right, very, very important. Let's now connect the easy slides with the networking world. So over here, we said that at your layer four, you've got two options. You can take insurance or you can't, or you don't want to take insurance. If insurance is taken, we say that you're using the TCP protocol and therefore you need to make sure that they are properly marked and every water bottle must be received. All right, if you decide to take if you decide not to take insurance, then that's a UDP protocol, user datagram protocol. And again, I must reiterate, if no insurance was taken, would you even mark the water bottles? No, you just send it. If the customer doesn't get it, too bad. If it's for 4.97 liters, doesn't matter. It's not your job as a supplier to make sure the customer gets it because they have not taken insurance. We said every water bottle must be five liters, five liters maximum. What is it in the real world? All right, in the networking world, all right, this is 1500 bytes. So every frame must be 1500 bytes. That's the maximum. And we also call it maximum transmission unit. We said that you know that you've got this water bottle and that's been, oh, that's a very crooked bottle, but anyway, all right, and that's got five liters, you know it's five liters because that's the law, but look at what you did. You actually stamped five liters on it again, just to make sure that it is five liters when we are sending it. So that five liter stamp is actually known as CRC, cyclic redundancy check. We also call it frame check sequence. So this five liter stamp for us was the trailer, all right, because the header was there, but this was only added at layer two. So therefore we call it a trailer. Why do we have the voice error reference model is the question now. We know that data communication is a very complicated process, all right, if you look at it just like that. But now that we have broken it up into smaller chunks, it's very, very easy to understand. That's one thing. Multi-vendor interoperability. Now, IBM can speak to Apple, which can speak to Microsoft, which can speak to DEC, which can speak to other vendors. This allows multi-vendor interoperability. And I love this last line. If I write a letter to my sister in New York, do I care how the Australia postal system works? No. What do I care about? The, the letter must reach my sister. And if the local postie in New York is taking the letter to my sister's place, does he care whether it's a birthday card, an anniversary card, or anything like that? It, is it his job to find that out? No, that's not his job. His job is simply to deliver the letter. So these are some of the concepts and the benefits of the OSI reference model. Finally, uh, this will be the last slide that we'll be covering, the TCP IP protocol architecture. TCP IP, uh, how do we have it today? You know, we said earlier that it was a Department of Defense project, wasn't it? Yes, the Department of Defense used it for, for a good time, for a good 15, 15 years, and then they realized that this whole DARPA project was funded by the US taxpayers' money. So then they gave it back to the US public. So TCP IP got back into the hands of the public, but to look after that, they created this organization known as IETF, Internet Engineering Task Force. These guys have become the caretakers of the internet now, all right, of TCP IP, I should say, my apologies. So how, how does TCP IP uh, 
update itself how can it deal with new challenges that are coming out every second day every second third day they we develop them through request for comments. So let's suppose you're sitting there and you're thinking to yourself, it would be great if TCP IP can do that. So you can write this 50 page document and uh, explain the benefits, what you're proposing and what benefits it will have and how it can be implemented. You send it to IETF, they are going to put it up on the internet and give it an RFC request for comments and give it a number engineers and um, programmers around the world will have a look and then they will work out a general consensus whether that's a good thing or a bad thing if it's a good thing and it will help tcp it will become a standard it will get incorporated into tcp ip if they think that that isn't a very good idea then this rfc will get deprecated over here i want to talk about the layers tcp ip has four layers application these are the protocols that work there. Transport, look at that. TCP gave you insurance. UDP gave you no insurance. Internet work uh, layer, that's your layer two. That's IP and network interface layer has got these protocols working for it over there. So my final question to you is, is IP a layer three? Because over here, we discussed that IP lives at which layer? Now let me go back for you. IP lives at layer 3 in the OS reference model but over here in the TCP IP model if you have a look IP is at layer 2 so if you go into an interview or an exam and the question is is IP a layer 2 or a layer 3 protocol what are you going to say tough one what do you think to explain that I need to explain these two words to you these are French words de facto and de jure de facto means as a matter of fact and did you means as a standard now tcp ip is a protocol that we use as a matter of fact so tcp ip is a de facto standard but the actual standard the actual standard itself is the osr reference model so whenever we talk about any layers etc we always talk about the osr reference model so in this case ip is a layer 3 protocol because that's what tc that's what osr reference model tells us all right. But if you're specifically asked, is IP a layer 2 or a layer 3 protocol with reference to the TCP IP model, then of course it's a layer 2 protocol. That concludes the OSI reference model at CBT Anytime. Thank you very much for being patient with me and I look forward to speaking to you soon and discussing other exciting technology pro projects.